Well, let's keep moving. Let's go to John, I mean Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And the only reason why I say it is up to your interpretation. Because only the people who believe Jesus is God, the mystery of him being God is revealed to you. But if you're not born again, and you don't believe he's God, what I'm talking to you this evening, you are not going to receive. And guess what? I don't care. I receive. Amen? Amen. He is not just the son of God. He is not just a prophet of the scripture. He's my God. Amen. That's why I can see it. But if you're not born again, you don't see it. You'll be just like, what is that man talking about? The image and the stamp, so me. But those of you who are born again see it, right? How many of you can see it? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 3. God, who had dried at, at sun-dry times, that at sun-dry is the old King James word for various times, who at sun-dry times in diverse matters, and that word diverse old King James for many. So, God, who at various times and in many manners spake in a time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in, these, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, capital, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Do y'all see an S on the end of the world? When I look that up, that makes cosmos. Where's the cosmos at, people? The universe. Yeah. Hello. The universe. It didn't just say world. It's an S on there. World. Hello. Amen. I want to get you heaven. But I just want you to see that word world there means cosmos. Amen. Hope I'm teaching you something. Verse 3. Who be the brightness of his glory and the express image. See it again? The express thing. The express image of his person. That word person is character. So he is the exact image of God's character. Oh, y'all not getting this. Amen. 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 The express image of God's character and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, woo, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Ain't that awesome? Yes. There it is again. Express image of God. Amen. Not only does he have express image, he has all of God's characteristics. That's why the word capital son there means we us. <coughs> and it means one who displays the character and characteristics of a father. And you need to know, when you come to Christ, you become we us to him. We us is the Greek word for son. Right? And it means one who displays the character and characteristics of God. That's why we should be striving to display the character and characteristics of God. But you can't do that if you're a sinner. Amen. If you're just knowledgeable, you can't do that. You have to begin to act like Christ, walk like Christ, talk like Christ, be honest like Christ. Come on. Amen. Amen. And that's hard, isn't it? I know if it's hard for me, it's got to be hard for you. Amen. I've been trying to do it for the last 20 years almost, and I still ain't got it right. But my heart is right. Amen. Amen. My heart is right. Amen. This flesh is never one. Go to John 14. John 14. <laughs> Do you just want to know the word or do you want to know him? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So how do you get to know him? By staying in your word. By staying in your word. And you ask God, reveal to me what you want me to see. Don't reveal to me what Rosada teaches me. Don't reveal to me what Warren is teaching me. They are nothing but orators of what you're trying to tell us. Now give it to me so I can go see what you're trying to tell me. Amen. That's why it's important to take notes. To either disprove or to approve. Because you should be testing every preacher. Amen. I even got to go home and listen to everything I say. I make big time mistakes while I'm up here. And I go home and go, oh, boy, I should have said that. Oh, man, I need to correct that. Oh, wow, I need to research this again. Because I make mistakes, but I know I'm going to be a heavier judge by what I say to people. Because you who are many teachers will be judged the hardest. So for you who want to be knowledgeable and always tell somebody this is right or wrong, no. Every idle word the Bible says that come out your mouth, you will be held in accountability for. Yes. Now that's Bible. So watch what you're teaching people about Jesus. Amen. 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 Right, do I need to say it again? No. John 14. <laughs> Y'all think it's just easy being up here. Oh, no. 
It is not. I pray for every preacher I see, even if they are wrong. But it's hard. It is hard. John 14, verses 8 through 10 says, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, that it may suffice us. See? Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how say thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am. See that word I am? I am. Who is God's name? The next one. That I am in thee, in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Believe me that I serve Jesus because of the work I do. Amen. Amen. I ain't even got to explain that. It's right there. Let's go to John 10. Look at some more here. John 10, verses 29 to 33. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So if you're really in God, can't no man snatch you out. Well, they made me do it. No, they didn't. If you're in God's hand, no man can take you out of God's hand. But you can choose to get out. God ain't never stopped you from jumping out. And I know that, because I jumped out of it plenty of day. But ain't nobody ever pulled me out of God. So if you're truly in God, ain't that what Jesus said we will leave? Right. He said, no man can pluck you out, but you always have a choice to jump out. Yeah. Every time you choose to sin, you chose to jump out of his hand. And you know, one of the things God has shown me years ago, this is war again, that every time I sin, and this is why whoever I love, I don't want to keep hurting. Amen. If I love you, why do I not want to keep hurting you? And I realized every time I sin, I was re-crucifying Jesus. Amen. Because I was putting me on the throne and him back on the cross. Well, I should put me on the cross and him on the throne. Amen. So when that began to hurt me, I said, I got to make a conscious choice to stop this. You know, I got some things in my life that are hurting me right now. You know, and I'm not believing because it's a new year. I don't believe in resolution. I just thought I'd be making my mind again. And say, you know what? It's time. It's just time. Man. You know, forget my flesh. Forget my depression. Forget all that crap. I'm going to enjoy myself. I found two of my friends that died back in Philly. Now, they thought because of my drug addiction and everything that I was going to be the one that died before the night. You know they did? One died of throat cancer. Another one died uh, just before him this year. Young boy. You know, but he chose to get high until the day he died. But now they see me. They were like, man, it's a miracle. To them, it's a miracle. To me, I finally made a choice. That's all you got to do. I decided to stop hurting the one I love. If I claim to love Jesus, I'm not going to hurt him no more. That's it. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Stop hurting him. Amen. John 10, verse 29 again. No man can put that again. Verse 30. I and the Father are one. There it is. I and the Father are one. Then the Jews took up stone. Boom, boom, boom. I should put this in my message about uh, go back to the stone. Then the Jews took up stones again to what? Stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone you not. See that? We ain't gonna stone you because you're doing something good. What are they gonna be stoning for? But for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man. See? It's right there. There's your proof. They weren't going to kill you because Jews figured out was better. They won't call you the God. <laughs> no, he ain't killing you because you healed somebody, raised somebody from the dead, blessed somebody with money. No, he won't kill you because you saved your <clears throat> Do these works all day long. Amen. Amen. I think y'all seeing it a little bit. Amen. Amen. Go back to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1. Because it's amazing to me that God can call God God. Did y'all hear that just said? Did y'all know that God called Jesus God? How many of you ever saw that? That God called Jesus God. I'm getting ready to show you that God called Jesus God. Ooh. I guess you. Wow, brother. <laughs> Believe me. It shocked me too. So we're going to go back to one look at verse 6. And again. When he read in the first, first begotten of the world, he 
He said, and let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 7. And of the angels, he said, who make of his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But, verse 8, here it is. But unto the Son, he said, thy throne, O God. Do y'all see? Mm -hmm. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Ain't that awesome? Amen. Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. Don't you see in verse 8 that God called Jesus God? Now, I used to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses and Muslims and everybody with these verses. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. Because in their translation, he's consistently called son. In their translation, he's consistently called teacher and prophet. But in ours, he's consistently called God. God. Amen. So, how you going to make a blind man see when Jesus said even the mystery of the word is only revealed to those who are in it? You'll just be talking to you, blue in the face, red in the face, purple in the face. And they're not going to get it. Amen? But what they will get is by watching your lifestyle. That's the word he's talking about. You try to prove to what is right and wrong in the Bible will never get an unsaved person to say it. It's the testimony of your walk. If you're walking in front of them and you're still sitting on a consistent basis, you, they won't believe no Jesus. Because people look for outward expression. Yes. They don't understand the forgiving God that loves us. I'm amazed every day how God can love me. How can he love me like this? It's amazing to me that he can love me through everything I've done. But yet he does. How can Because I couldn't love you like that. I just couldn't. Stole from you. Cussed you. Beat you. Lied on you. You know, testified against you. Yes. But yet you still say I can give you love. What kind of God are you? First. And you tell me to love others that way too? Man! Give me more faith. <laughs> give me more faith. Yeah. Amen. Go back to Colossians chapter 1 again. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Yeah, amen. Amen. One sixteen. What does it say? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus. Everything was created by him and for him, invisible and invisible. Do you know there are so many minute things that our human eye can't see that are alive? Yeah. Scientists are finding this stuff every day. Yeah. You know? I was watching a thing on um, Darwinism the other day. They still praising him, but they still can't figure out where we came from. <laughs> so now they decide to switch that we all came from aliens now. You know, they're finding to say that the real true story was written by aliens, and, and, and the African Eve story was written by aliens. And I'm sitting there saying, man, you know, here's human man, and this stuff sounds logical, but because of who I love, but because of my faith, I ain't got to have it now. I met him personally. Have you met him personally yet? Because no matter what a human being said, if you met him personally, my mother couldn't read nor write, but she knew Jesus. Amen. Amen. She was considered mentally retarded, but she was in church every Sunday praising Jesus. Now, how could that be? The woman couldn't read nor write and was considered mentally retarded, but she praised Jesus to the day she died. Amen. Amen. How is that? Amen. Because the wisdom of this world means nothing to God. Amen. Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. <coughs> Uh, Ephesians 3. Brian, let me see the Bible. You Ephesians 3. I broke my water Bible. So. <laughs> Ephesians 3, looking at verses 8 and 9. And it says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints. Am I in the right place? Yeah. yeah. 
unto me, or who is less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable, see, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, there you go, mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by who? Jesus Christ. Created all things by Jesus Christ. I wanted you to see that. But it's a mystery unto them. How many of you don't want it to be a mystery anymore? Amen. Amen. If yours are here, it's no more of a mystery to you. Yeah. It's no more of a mystery to you. Matter of fact, how much time I got? I want to prove that it's not a mystery. This ain't my notes. Where's that? Uh, go to Romans 1. One of Ron's favorite books, Romans. Romans 1. It's just follow me. Hopefully, I got it here. Okay, Romans 1. Yeah, Romans chapter 1. Bingo. Start at verse 16. One of my favorite verses here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto who? Salvation to everyone that what? Believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. It's about faith. Why? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. shown it unto them. Here it is. You ready? Here it is. For the visible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. What is, what is clearly seen? The flower, the sky, the trees, the change of seasons. Isn't that clearly seen? Yes. These things are clearly seen and you still don't say there's a God. He said, here are the things that are clearly seen and you still don't acknowledge me. Keep reading. First Corinthians. No, First Corinthians chapter one, I think. I think it's verse five. But don't go there yet. Let me see if I can find it. Chapter one. There you go, boy, I tell you. One twenty-three. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. No, I wanted the foolishness of preaching. Because of the force of the Which one is it? Second? Corinthians 1. 123. Bingo, it's 21. 21. Chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. That's what I wanted. So here it is that you see all these things in the world. But it takes the foolishness of what I'm doing to get you born again. So God calls what I'm doing foolishness. Do y'all see that? Is it me or is it written there? I use the foolishness of preaching to get you to be saved. When all you should have to do is look at the flowers come out the ground. Look at the grass. Look at the ants. Look at everything that's around you and say it's got to be a God. John 1. John 1. So, tell me how those things got here. You can't. The wisdom of this world, you can't. That's why it goes by faith, people. I don't care how much these men, because the more men get knowledgeable and try to get close to God, the further God gets away from them. You can talk to you blue in the face. Amen. And let's look at, uh, starting at verse 1. In the beginning, now what's the beginning? Just like Genesis, this is New Testament. Genesis was the beginning of what? Creation? And John 1 is the beginning of new creation. 
That's when grace comes in. So, in the beginning was the Word, as you see it capitalized, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Look at that. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by Him, and without was not anything made that was made. Jump over to verse 14. Watch this. I love this. And the Word was made flesh and the wealth among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. I like to say grace is this. It was taught by my bishop's leader. His name was Don Beer. And he taught this thing on grace called the word for meaning grace. Because, you know, a lot of Bibles call it unmerited favor. How many of you ever see that? Especially you studiers. And they amplify and say grace means unmerited favor. No, no. The original text means this. God's empowering presence to do his will and purpose in your life. So, if grace was unmerited favor with Jesus, that means he would have had to have sinned. Jesus did not sin. We have unmerited favor because we sin. But, if grace means God's empowering presence, let's read that again with some proper interpretation. Here we go. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of God's empowering presence and truth. That's why when you get born again, you get grace. Yes. You get God's empowering presence to what? Do his will and purpose in your life. So that means you make a mistake and keep calling on Jesus. Amen. But if you only wrapped in mercy, guess what would happen? You're going to hell. That's why I said get the law off of you and put the grace on you. Amen. But if you keep looking at the law, you will never move into grace. Amen. Say, God, forgive me. I repent. Help me stop. And watch the grace of God carry you through. But when you walk around, you shouldn't be doing that. You ain't nobody there putting the law on you. I told y'all plenty of times. I will take this this Bible right here, this beat up thing, and take it in the crack house and read. You say, How can you read your Bible while smoking dope? God's grace. I didn't know it was His grace at the time. And was he still giving me knowledge and wisdom and revelation? Show us. How could you do that, God? He was showing me his ultimate love. He was showing me there ain't nothing that he can't do for me, that he can't forgive, and that, that I can't do to cause him to hate me. He loves me, just like he loves you. No matter how many times I try to cause him to hate me, he went. Amen. Amen. You can't cause God to hate you. Amen. Amen. That came out of somewhere. Go to the three, John three, John three, verse sixteen and seventeen. Wow, y'all know it by heart. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him shall what? Not perish, but have everlasting life. That word life is Z O E, Zoe, eternal life. For verse seventeen, for God sent not His Son into the world to what? Condemn the world, but that the world through Him might. Go to uh, John chapter 5. John 5. I see my time is going down, but God got control. Amen? John 5, verse 18. What does that say? Therefore the Jews sought the Lord to kill him, because not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him what? Evil. How many of you are born again in here to see you? If you're born again, say it now. Amen. Oh, I like that. I love it. I'm not a All right. Let's go to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Familiar verse. But let's see if we can enlighten you a little bit of this. All right. Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Now you don't run them together. You see the comma? Uh -huh. Wonderful. Counselor. It's not Wonderful Counselor. It's just Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty. What does it say? The Mighty God. Amen. <laughs> the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Amen. How many places can you prove he's God from old to new? Amen. 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 Go back to uh, 1 Timothy 3. I want to give you as many scriptures before I close. 1 Timothy 3. And it's a lot more. 
It's a lot more.